like Scoob, I don't think that was a microdose. <laughs> Now, 2,5-DMA is really not a well-known psychoactive. 2-CB, on the other hand, is a well-known psychoactive. And I wanted to legally almost make that. Now, starting with 2,5-dimethoxybenzaldehyde, we could just react this with nitromethane to give us 2,5-dimethoxy-beta-nitrostyrene. Now, we needed to find a procedure, so where would I go? Well, I think we need to find the father of 2-CB to do this. Alexander Shulgin actually synthesized this in 1974, and all I did was use his book, Phenethylamines I Have Known and Loved, and I found a procedure. And after starting the procedure, everything was going really well. Until I found out that I used the wrong reagent. The procedure calls for nitromethane, but I used nitroethane. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell. Now, my honest reaction was pretty extreme, but all it does is just change what scheduled drug we can almost make. And that's why I brought up 2,5-DMA. We're kind of stuck almost legally making this, so might as well make the video about this. Since we use nitroethane instead on accident, it now changes it. And it's now going to be 1,2,5-dimethoxyphenyl-2-nitropropene. And this is how far we can go legally based on Shulgin's procedure for 2,5-DMA. If I did decide to reduce it, the DEA is really not going to be happy, and YouTube's not going to be happy either. Now, there's a reason why 2,5-DMA is not well known, and it's really not used a lot. Shulgin did try this, and he said it appeared to be totally a physical trip with tremors and some cardiovascular push, and nothing of a sensory nature. He chose to explore it no further. Now we can finally see how I skated the lines of legality and not go to prison. Kind of like Dan Schneider being on the iCarly set. To start, all I did was add a stir bar to a round bottom boiling flask. After that, I put 9.51 grams of 2,5-dimethoxybenzaldehyde. This also had quite a unique smell, and it kind of reminded me of like a plasticky smell. Unfortunately, this is where I added the wrong reagent but we do add 22 grams of nitroethane. I somehow misread nitromethane versus nitroethane, and I may be dyslexic now. A yellow color also was observed after the addition of nitroethane. 1.05 grams of ammonium acetate was also added into the solution. After that, I stirred and set it for a reflux. The plan is to bring it to reflux for about 2.5 hours. As the solution heats up, we can see that everything dissolves and it slowly turns into more of a yellowish orange color. This was observed about 20 minutes after I started the reflux. While that was cooking, I decided to set up an ice bath for a future step. I poured some ice onto an ice bath in a recrystallization dish and I let it cool. I filled a beaker with 100 milliliters of 70% isopropyl alcohol and I placed it into the ice water. I also filled a test tube with some isopropyl alcohol as well, so we can wash the crystals that form. Once 2.5 hours hit, I was ready for the next step. I took the boiling flask out of the heating mantle, and you can see we have this beautiful orangish yellow color. Normally, you would strip the excess nitroethane off using a vacuum. However, I saw another procedure where they just poured this into the ice-cold 70% isopropyl alcohol. You essentially took the boiling hot solution right after reflux and just pour it in. This would essentially cool down after a while and just crystallize. I really didn't know how long this was going to take, so I just poured it in slowly and really just watched to see what happens. I also washed the flask out with some cold isopropyl alcohol and I poured that into the beaker as well. The procedure never really gave a timeline for how long this would take, so I was kind of just stuck watching it and it was starting to get really worried when I never saw any crystals. It really just looked like layers were forming, and the solution was clearing up. I really didn't see any crystals. In my head, I was thinking, ain't no f***ing way this happened, and I was swirling the flask around. After that, I just set it down and was kind of pissed. However, after that, I did see something quite particular. The formation of crystals were slowly starting to appear. Do my eyes deceive me? Are crystals actually forming? Normally, my experiments have been failing lately, 
And to see this was quite an enjoyable experience. It's kind of like when a cute girl flirts with you. However, she's just a worker and she's actually just being nice. Anyway, after some time, we saw that we have full crystal formation. Beautiful hair-like projections of divine crystalline structure. In other words, it just looks really cool. I also put it into an ice bath to further decrease the solubility and favor the crystalline formation. Pulling it out of the ice bath, we can see our beautiful crystals, and we're ready to go on to the next step. All we have to do now is just a vacuum filtration, and we're pretty much done after that. I also let the vacuum run for a little bit of time, just to aid in the drying process. The filtrate also had a beautiful color, and it kind of reminded me of Fanta, and I was about ready to drink it. To also aid the drying process, I decided to get a spatula and move some of the crystals around. Using the spatula to move things around, we can also see how fluffy and densely packed the crystals are. After letting it dry overnight, we can see how beautiful these crystals are. This beautiful yellow orangish color has a very nice sheen that glows with the light in the room. I also used my extremely fancy chemistry oven to dry the crystals some more. This oven has a dehydrating option, so I thought that would be the best for this. I set the oven to about 38 degrees Celsius, so it wasn't too hot, but it wasn't also too cold, and it would dry quite quickly. I let it dehydrate for about two hours, and then I was ready to take it out. And after about two hours, our crystals are looking quite dry. All that's left now is to weigh and package them. 8.07 grams seems to be the weight and yield that we got. 63.16% is the percent yield of 1,2,5-dimethoxyphenyl-2-nitropropene. Now let's see if I can ampule this. I also just want to give a, a heat of warning. I am awful at ampuling things, so this will be a journey. I used pliers that were way too thick, and I tried pulling on the glass before it was hot enough. I guess apparently I'm not good at blowing. This is not good. I ended up just trying to squish it together just to try to get it to ampule, but it really didn't work out either. I know every glass blower is probably looking at me with disgust and probably will unsubscribe, but I tried my best. I just put it into this non-drug looking baggie, and this is our final product. Now, I can't go any further than this because, well, I could either get absolutely destroyed by the Federal Analog Act or by the DEA itself since it's kind of crossing the line of legality. I also want to give a huge shout out to everyone who joined the DEA's watch list with me as you viewed this video. I definitely have a lot of ideas for the next videos, and there's going to be one about making a banned sports supplement that I'm pretty excited about. Other than that, Candelic out.